Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And today we're back with another brand new Airtable feature that I think is going to radically change the way that you can create automations inside of Airtable. And that's with something called repeating groups. Now, if you're a developer, this is probably something you just think of as a for loop or a for each that for every single item in some kind of list, we're going to repeat some kind of action. Now, many of you today are already using a tool like Make Integromat to be able to do this kind of automation logic. Now you can do it natively inside of the Airtable system. So to set us up for a particular business use case, we're going to say that we're trying to complete work order requests. So we have customers who have some kind of issue, electrical, plumbing, etc., and they want to be able to call out multiple issues, submit a form for it. And on the back end, we want to be able to create multiple work orders depending on the issue types that they have. So let's talk about the structure real quick that we have. I've got four tables. I've got repair items. And these are what we're going to be able to essentially choose from a list. Light bulb replacement, electrical issue, plumbing. We could have a whole bunch of these on here. We've got our residents, which are going to be the customers that are having issues. We have work orders. And these are going to be the records that we're actually going to create dynamically with the automations on the back end. And then we have work order requests. And this is to be able to handle the form submission events from the customers who are experiencing their problems. Now, the work order requests are really simple. If we create the form here, all we have is their email address, their repair types, and we've got some notes. Of course, we could add to this, but we're going to keep the example really simple for now. On the repair types, we've got things like an SLA. How many days does this have to be completed in order to satisfy that requirement of that time window that we need to do it by. Let's go ahead and fill this form out like we are a resident experiencing an issue. So we'll open up the form and we'll type in the email address here. And we're going to do some automation on the back end to automatically look up that customer record. And for a repair type, we actually had multiple issues. We had both electrical and we had plumbing. Remember, that's a, a linked record that we have back to the repair type and where we have the ability to choose multiple issues here. And then we're just going to say there was a sewer backup issue leading to malfunction. Great. We'll go ahead and submit this. If we go back into our table and we look at our grid view here, we can see that this created the work order request. Hasn't created the work order yet. This is one we already had inside of the system. Let's go ahead and create the automation to be able to do this, which actually uses the new feature that we're talking about. Let's go ahead and add a trigger of when a form is submitted. And we'll go based off of the work order request table. And we'll choose the default form here. We'll use a suggested record. Good. Now we do want to add a little bit of logic here because we want to find the records based off of that email address. So we're identifying the customer rather than giving them access to all the customers and choosing from a drop down list there. So we're going to go ahead and find the customer or the resident. And we're going to find based on a condition. And we'll say where their email address is equal to or contains. And we'll do a dynamic value here. And we're going to pull from the actual form submission event to check on the email itself. So if that email matches, then we're going to pull that record and we're going to link to that customer record. So let's go ahead and test our step there. We were able to find Han Solo, found his customer record, so we're good to go. Now here's the fun part. We're going to go ahead and click. And when you see this advanced logic, notice this new repeating group. So we're going to say, for each of these repair items, we're going to repeat what it is that we're asking to do. We'll create this group. And within the grouping here, within kind of this little umbrella, we've got the ability to add multiple actions and repeat that each time that something occurs. Now, it says that no list is selected. We have to inform the system which list we want to be able to draw from. In this case, I'm going to choose an input list. And we're going to base this off of the repair type because it already identifies that linked relationship and those multiple repair types can count as a list. Now, these lists could come from different places. So another example could be totally outside of the excuse case. You could do find records and find certain customers based off of some criteria. And then you could do a repeating group 
and you could send them all an email and it'll fire off that email separately for each person in that list. So lots of different options to be able to create the list, but we're going to use this one based off of the record that we have with the repair type. Now from here, we can test the input list and this is going to identify that there are in fact two different types of repairs here and we could click through and see what those values are. Now let's go ahead and add our action. In this case, we wanna create a work order each time for each of those repair items. So we'll go ahead and we'll select a table and we're gonna create a new work order each time. And let's go ahead and map our fields. We can say that the notes is going to map to the form submission notes. That's where we're going to be able to pull that from. And we'll keep going down the list. Don't need to worry about assignee at this point. Status, let's go ahead and just say this is to do by default. We don't have to dynamically do that. In terms of our customer, this is where we got that from our find records step. So we'll go to find records and we'll make a new list of those record IDs. That'll be our customer. And then comes the repair type. And in this case, the repair type is the current item and we'll just set it as the ID because it's going to go through each one of those, create a brand new work order for it and associate the repair type with the appropriate one at that point. So at this point, let's go ahead and just run it as configured. We'll run the test here. And this looks like it worked. It's creating these records on our behalf. I believe it's only showing us one of the records, even though there were two that were actually created. So I'm kind of curious if in the future we'll be able to see all the records that were created. But in any case, let's go back to our data here. We can switch that to on, head back to our data, go to our work orders, and we can see that it created a single record. So I think what it's doing is, as we're actually testing the automation, it's just going to run it the one time. But I'm pretty sure this is going to work when we actually do the data ourselves with a brand new form submission. I'm gonna go back to my work order requests and let's go ahead and open up that form again. And let's try this again. We'll, uh, we'll do good old Luke Skywalker here. And we'll add two more issues for him. And we'll just put in a test description. Let's go ahead and submit it. Head on back to our work orders, and you can see that it in fact did work. So if you're testing this for the first time, you might find that it actually only does the run on a single record for that. I guess I can understand why, but it's a little bit confusing as you're going through that. In this case, now that the automation is actually live and running, that works. It generates our multiple records. We can see they're both associated with the customer. We've got the status. This due date's kind of slick because we're pulling that SLA from the repair items and we're saying, how long do we have to complete this? So right now I'm recording this on February 15th and it applied my SLAs to say, here is when these things are actually due. Again, possibilities are really endless here in terms of the number of different kinds of automations you can create with those repeating groups. I'd love to hear in the comments how you're planning to use this particular feature now that it's live and available inside of Airtable. And of course, if you have any questions in setting up your own Airtable instance, we're offering a free 30-minute consultation over at automationhelpers.com. Feel free to reach out, leave any questions in the comments below.